Hello, everyone. We are welcome to the um, eighth class in a series of 16 classes for this free training course. Today, we'll be looking at SQL statements. We'll have a brief talk on SQL statements and we'll um, write some scripts today. I believe we all have a SQL, Microsoft SQL, um, installed on our system, on our computers, and uh, the ID, the um, SQL management studio as well installed. If you haven't installed it, you can check on the previous classes and go through the lessons and the installation steps and then um, install before coming to this class so you can um, understand and, you know, be able to try the scripts we'll be writing in this class along with us. So I'm going to share my screen now and we'll have a brief talk before we go into the demo itself. Yeah, so this is our first objective for this class. We'll be looking at SQL syntax, then um, looking at the broad categories of SQL statements, and then we're going straight to writing SQL statements on um, Microsoft SQL query file. So SQL has become a standard for manipulating and managing data in a relational database environment. Um, meaning that you can write SQL statements on various um, relational database types. So they are quite similar or they have just very little changes or differences between them. But you write the same SQL in Microsoft SQL, in Oracle SQL, in uh, MySQL and just a little syntax difference, but they look basically the same. So it's very important that for you to know how to manipulate data, for you to know how to manage data um, in a structured um, environment or yeah, in, in a structured uh, format, you need to know how to communicate in SQL. So SQL is defined as a language that you speak, right, to, um, or to, that you write to communicate with data. Um, there are various categories of um, SQL statements, but there are two main categories and most popular categories that we use most of the time in um, manipulating and managing data. And these are the data definition language um, statements, and the data manipulation language statements. They are short formed as DDL and DML statements. Um, other ones are data control language statements, data query language statements. Um, they are used many a times at the back end to do some um, managing of the database. Um, um, we, re we rarely use that. But most times you find people using the DDL and DML, and we'll be covering that in our training. So um, the DDL statements are generally statements used for used on objects and structures within the database. So objects and structures in the database are the database itself. Um, the tables within the database. Remember, a database is simply a collection of your tables, right? Um, um, the users within your database. Um, you can you can have multiple users in the database file, unlike in Excel that you can have only a single user per file. Um, so you you can you can you can um, manipulate the roles and the privileges on a user using 
um, some statements in data definition languages. Then um, you also have what we call views. Views are like temporary tables used while working in your database. You can also manipulate indexes. Um, indexes are created on tables to make your data manipulation much faster. Um, as we go on, we are going to treat um, these various objects and see how to write the scripts for manipulating or managing them. Um, common DDL statements are create, alter, drop, and truncate. On my screen, you have um, some syntax of how these statements are written. Um, in our last class, we created a database using, um, using a user-friendly interface by just clicking. But you can write a script to also create a database. And the simple script is just to write, create database, and then the database name. So you write it in your query file, and then you execute, and it creates the database for you. You can also create a table. In our last class, we created a table by simply clicking to create, or you can create by writing the script for it, whose syntax is simply create table, the name of the table, then your column definitions and parameters that are optional actually for your table. You can also, um, Alter. alter is to make changes to your table. So you can alter an existing table by using the same command on your screen as well. Simply alter table. Students, this is an example of whatever alteration you might want to do on your table. You may want to um, alter um, the data. You might want to alter some other kind of information in your table. So. You can drop database. Um, drop is like deleting, like removing completely. So you can also delete a database that you have created using drop. We are going to try these commands in our demo session and you are going to see how it works. So these are examples of data definition languages. If you notice in the examples I've given to you, the commands are written in capital letters to help you distinguish between the command and the objects. So the commands are written in capital letter. The objects are written in uh, um, statement letter, or, sorry, in sentence letters, right? Or in small letters. So um, you can see that these commands are actual, they are acting on the object. So you are creating a database on a database file. Um, you are creating a table on a table on a table file. You are altering a table on a student table file. So that's how you distinguish. But generally you have create commands, alter commands, drop commands, and truncate commands as your data definition languages. Then um, most times, People who are given the privileges to be able to do data definition languages are your data administrators. Um, in, in a data environment or in an IT environment, you have people with different profiles and different um, work allocation. So this, these are quite sensitive commands. You don't want to give anybody the privilege to be able to um, delete database because once there's a drop of the database, all the data is gone. So um, for, for personal use or for um, other uses, you might also be careful of using these commands because they can actually you know, make, um, they, they can actually wipe off all of your data, right? Especially the drop command and then the truncate commands. These are very sensitive commands to use. Then um, we also need to know the difference between truncate, drop, and delete. Truncate will actually remove all the data within the object, but the object will still be there. 
However, there will be no data in it. Then drop or delete will actually remove the object and the data. So if you use the drop or delete command, you will no longer find your, if you are using it on your table, on your database, you will no longer find the table or the database in your SQL server. It will, it will be permanently deleted. Okay, so um, the next category of SQL statements which is even most popular and uh, um, yeah, most popular and then um, better managed because uh, it's um, it's more in in use than um, doesn't affect or it, the the effect on it on the data may not be um, may not cause that much of damage. Um, these examples are select, update, insert, and delete. Okay, um, but most most times people would just grant a select privilege to people for databases, right? Because select will allow um, users to be able to view the data in the databases, right? But for updates, updates would make changes the data in your databases. Insert would uh, create new entries into your table or databases. Then delete. Delete is a data definition language. Uh, sorry, data manipulation language. Wow, sorry. Um, this heading here is wrong. It should be data manipulation language, right? The previous is data definition, and then this is data manipulation language. Okay, so data manipulation language is uh, the select, update, insert, and delete, right? So this actually work on the data within the objects of your databases, right? And um, when you do a select star, it should allow you to view all the data within your table, right? You can only do a select star on Table, you can't do it on databases. Um, then insert into table will allow you to um, impute a new entry into your table. Then you can as well define some more conditions or entries on your select um, statement. And we're going to see that when we get to the demo session. So you can do a select column. Um, specifying the columns that you want to view. And then you can even put a filtering condition using the where clause. Um, you can group your, your selected information using the group by, group by clause, right? You can create a filtering on your group information using the having, and then you can order. Um, in ascending, descending, order using the other by clause, right? So that's the brief talk on the SQL statements. We're going to move into our demo now. I would like you to get on your system and then um, um, start your SQL Server Management Studio. Let's work on the data that we imported into our database in our previous class. So I'm going to um, open up my database my, in my SQL Management Studio. Okay, yeah. Okay, so for you to write SQL statements, you, you need to write your SQL statements in what we call a query file. Um, your query file 
allows you to write SQL statements and to execute them. Right. So to call up a query file, you would um, see it in your panel on the top here called new query. So you just click on new query. I want to check if we can call it up from some other place here as well. Okay, so you can as well call it up from files, go to new and then click on files. Okay, no. So would there's no query file option here. Okay, so we are going to simply call up our new query file from here. So just click on new query. Right, so you have the environment where you can type your query commands now. Um, so in this environment, remember yesterday to create a database, we simply right click on databases and did new, right? And then we created our test database. But today we are going to create a database simply by using the SQL script command. So to do that, we're just going to write create. Um, SQL is not case sensitive, so you can write in small letters, you can write in capital letters, but preferably we write the commands in capital and the objects in small letters so as to make it more readable to the eyes. So I'm going to write my command capital letters. Create database. And then I'll give it a database name. Of course, if I give it the existing database name, it will not create. So I'm going to give it a new database name. So I'm going to call this training. Training DP. So the command is as simple as this. Sometimes you, um, in, in Microsoft SQL, you, it can accept your query statement, whether you end it by um, a semicolon or not. But in some, in some relational DBs like MySQL, you need to end your query statement with semicolon. But in Microsoft SQL, whether you end it in semicolon or not, it will execute. So um, I can leave it this way and I can decide not to put semicolon. So after writing, writing the script, for it to execute, you need to click on this execute file. I mean, execute icon or press F5 on your keyboard. So I'm just going to click on execute. And then you have the um, response written down here saying commands completed successfully. If there's an error, it's as well going to display the error here as well. So now our database is created. For us to view the database, we're just going to come to databases, refresh, and now you can see your new database that you have just created, right? So your database is created, of course, um, with default system tables, you need to create your own tables and as well um, create all other objects that you want to have in your database. Um, so we've, create, we've done the um, create database. Now we are going to try to delete. But before we do that, there's another important um, statement I want us to know about is known as the comment statement. So whenever you are writing your script, it's always good you put in information so that it can guide you in what you have written when next you come back to open that script file. So to put in those kind of information or to put in comments, we use we we simply use the uh, we simply use the symbol of two icons. So I've put two icons, and then I'm going to write some comments here. 
you're, you might also decide to want to comment out a statement you have written. To do that, you just simply start the statement or put at the beginning of the statement your comment symbols. So I'm going to write a comment on this file saying that uh, this is a demo class or this is the demo class. SQL statements okay so um this is simply a comment right so now my first command is uh, create database. So okay, so now I want to create a second command for dropping database. Yeah, don't worry, I'm going to share this script file with you in the chat box after the um, session today. So you are going to have the script file as well. Um, so just try to follow along. Okay, so to drop DB, I want to delete this DB I just created. I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm just going to use the drop command. So I'll say, um, drop db then the database name sorry database you have to write database in full. drop database database then the database name now an easier way instead of typing the name at times an easier way is just to click on the database just click not a left left click not right click just click then hold down your click, hold down your mouse button or your click, then drag to where you want to have the name written. So once you do that, it will type in the name for you. So drop database and click on execute. Yeah, so training DB already to the different database name. Oh, okay. Yeah, database has been um, dropped. So if I refresh here now, I will no longer find my database. Right. Um, if I have tables or data already in my database, everything is going to go off as well. Um, so we can as well um, create table. La yesterday, we, in our last class, we created table by uh, right-clicking, right, on um, the database, and then creating table. Right-clicking on tables, then new, then table. But now we can do that using a script. So let's create a table. To create the table command, you are going to use create table. Um, your table name. Um, so let's, we have customers, products, sales, student list. Let's create a table name called uh, um, Mm. 
let's say channels. Yeah, so I can use this block symbol and I may decide not to use the block symbol. The block symbol simply helps if there's a space within your table name. So I, if I have a space within my table name, I'll, let's say I want to create channels table this way, then I need to use the block symbol, right? But it's best practice not to use spaces because sometimes when you are using the table name, it might not um, recognize this space and you have to use the block, right? So most times we just advise not to use space. So I'll rather use um, something to replace my space or not use space at all. So I can, cre I can create the name without the blocks. So I'll just say create table, table name then I'm going to have to define my um, table functions. So I will open a bracket and then define my table columns in there. So open bracket. I'll define each of my columns. So let's assume I want the first column of channel ID that will just contain the um, maybe serial numbers or unique identification for each channel. So channel ID, um, let me use an integer in this case because I want it to just contain um, serial numbers. So integer, you write your integer in full. So integer, right. So this, uh, you write the column name the data type definition that will be in that column. Then you also specify some parameters like, can it contain null or not null? So in this case, I don't want it to contain null value. So I'm going to use not null. So the first column is defined. For me to define the second column, I'll use a comma and put the column name of the second column. So um, let's say channel now. So that's the channel name or any name. Um, so I put name and you can see it's showing me in blue. This to tell you that even though I'm trying to use name as a column name, but name is also used as a um, function name or the, the special, the special string within SQL. So it's advised not to use name like this, but use a different string other than name. So instead of calling it name, I can say channel name. So channel name, I want it to be a character type. I can use vaca. So there are. So there are various character types. The common ones are ka and vaca. The difference between ka and vaca is that uh, ka would always maintain the same space that you are giving it. So it's believed that ka is not memory um, efficient because when, let's say I define my column to have ka 50, does if you say CAR 50, you are simply telling the computer to reserve 50 string character space for that column, for each data in that column. So let's assume I put in a value that is 10 character space. The remaining 40 character space will go to waste. But if I use a variable CAR, VACA, the remaining character space will be retrieved in memory. And then it would, it would do like a text wrap for each of the values in the character. So most times it's better to use a VACA, except in cases that you want all your values the same, to have the same length of character. For example, if you are putting a mobile number, uh, if you are defining a mobile number column and you want all 
the values in that column to have the same length of mobile character number. So you can use car in that case. So in this case, I'm going to use Baka. Um, I can just estimate that the channel name cannot be longer than 50 characters. So I'll use car 50 because you need to define a number of characters. Then um, I can say this is not null as well. Um, that's optional. You can define that. You can choose not to define that. Then um, I can have a channel type. Now end my table there. So channel type, I want it to be um, okay. That would be vacuum. But it can be null. Um, channel active. So is that channel active or not? So in this case, I want to know is going to be a yes or no. So a yes or no data type is defined as Boolean, meaning that it can have just two values. So either bit or Boolean. So I'm just going to write your data type here. So let's use bit, then not null. So I'm going to close my column. So this would create for me my table. And um, I can execute this. So to execute, because I have several commands on my query file, and I want to execute just one of them. I can highlight the one I want to execute and then click execute. Right, so command executed successfully. Aha. So I've created a table, but I'm not going to find my table in test DB. I'm going to find it somewhere else. I've created the table channels, but the table channels is not here. Why? This is because your, your current database is reviewed here as master. So if you are creating a query, you need to um, tell the server to which database your query should execute to. So because I'm currently in master's DB, my table channel would have been created under masters. So I'm going to check for masters DB now and I'll find my table channel there. So you can see the table you have we have created PBO channels. So the table we created was created under masters. Right. So that's something for us to take note of. Whenever we are executing our query, we should ensure we are in the right DB. So I'm going to change this now to test DB, and I'm going to re-execute. So just simply do a refresh, right click and do refresh. So now you can find your channel stable created. Um, your channel table is created, but there's no data in it. If you right click on it and say edit, you can see your table and your table columns created. Okay. Um, let's go back to our script. So now in our script, we want to do um, some more things. We can decide to insert as well from our script into our table. 
So we are going to do a few more manipulation on our table before we um, go into some other scripts. So on our table, we are going to insert the data using the script. So to insert data into your table, you are just going to use the insert into statement. So insert into, so you specify the table name. I'm just simply going to drag my table, right? Then you specify the columns, only the columns in a bracket. I don't want to type, so I'm just going to keep dragging and dragging. So I'm going to drag column, second column. Third column. You separate the columns by comma. Then you specify the values. Insert into table name values. You also put the values by comma. So this is just a way of inserting by script. Um, in most cases, you do your insert maybe using the table designer showed to you here, you can as well insert, well, we just want to see how to insert by script. So here I can specify the values I want, um, the name, okay, so this is a character, so you need to put it in single quotes. The codes. This should be channel type, not name. Okay, so the type is also a character, so it has to be in single quotes. So let's say these are main warehouse or main channel. mobile channel, name, then um, active it has to be true or false. So I can close this now. Right, so to execute, to simply highlight and then click on execute. Truncated value. Oh, so in our backup, there's an error here saying that um, channel type will be truncated to M. The reason is that in our backup, we did not specify the length. So it has given it a default length of one. So it's truncating, it's wanting to truncate the value of my name to M. Right, so I, I need to come back here and change my table definition. So to change my table definition, if I try to use the alter command again, um, let's say my channel type, I want it to be 10. If I try to execute my create command again, it will not allow me. It will tell you there's already an object created as channel, we can't create it again. So to make changes to our table, we are simply going to use the alter command. So we'll say alter table, channels, specify all that we want. 
and then execute. Oh, okay. So in this case, you are going to specify what you want to alter. Okay, let, let's not change the script. So alter table script. I'm going to leave this as back at that way. So alter table script. Um, we are going to use we are going to specify the table that we want to alter and the column for it. Column channel type. As vaca ten. Okay, so let's drop column. Drop. Let's drop the column and recreate the column. So alter table, drop this column. Then we'll add the column again, redefining the syntax. So copy. Alter the table to add column. So do add column, channel type, and then define the channel. So we need to specify the vaca now. Okay. So we'll simply highlight this and execute. Right. So the first script here, alter table script to delete column. The other one will alter table script to add the column again. Right. Okay, so now that the column is well defined, we can now insert into our data, uh, table. So insert data into our channels table. Okay, so when we execute this now, we should not have any problem, right? So this is executed. You can see it to tell you that one row affected, meaning one row has been inserted into your table. Um, for you to confirm, you can go and open your table in design mode or on the query, just go to your table and um, Open. Okay, so you can see your data in your table. Your script has inserted data into your table. Of course, you can choose to insert data as well through this means. Um, 
right? Channel type. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I defined my channel type as having variable character 10. Sorry. I defined my car, my channel type as having a variable character 10. So because alternative is longer than 10 in character, it's throwing this error. Right. So um I need to use the number of character for it, right? And then um, my data is inserted. So we are going to stop this class for today here and we'll go into um, the next script commands for this class tomorrow. So I'd like you to practice these script commands and execute them based on the data you have in your um, table. Right, and send me this information as well. Okay, thank you. I'll stop the recording now.